Should we start? Yes, sir. Uh, hello, uh, friends. Um, it's a pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Ajay Mishra, who will be deliv del delivering uh, how many, some five, six talks um, uh, in this uh, high pressure physics course. Uh, Dr. Ajay Mishra joined high pressure activity from BRC Training School in 2003. So he is uh, pursuing this activity almost for the last 20 years. After his PhD, Dr. Mishra went to famous Carnegie uh, Institution of Geophysics in USA, which is considered the mecca of uh, high pressure physics uh, and world over. And there he has done some outstanding work on uh, not only synthesizing super uh, hydrides, uh, lanthanum, and other uh, elements, but also setting up a record highest uh, temperature uh, of the superconductivity which they observed under high pressure. He has to his credit uh, using a variety of diamond anvil cells for low temperature, high pressure investigations beyond megabars which I can fairly say very few people in the country have that kind of expertise. So it will be a pleasure to listen to uh, the next set of talks from Dr. Ajayabhishan. Dr. Ajayabhishan. Yeah. Of us up there or somebody? So, am I audible? Yeah, sure. So, first of all, uh, let me thank the thank me thank Dr. Sarma for introducing me and uh, the patron of for this course, Dr. R. Chidambaram, and of course my mentor, uh, Dr. S. M. Sharma for initiating this high pressure uh, physics course online, which will be really very helpful and very useful for the condensed matter community working in the extreme conditions, especially with the pressure and temperature, whether high pressure, high temperature, or high pressure, low temperature, or with compression itself. So to start with, uh, uh, here is the outline for this talk. Uh, like I will introduce you about uh, high pressure, why high pressure, and then advancement, especially. Advancement in high pressure techniques. What happened? Some problem? Uh, there is, yeah, there is some issue with HDMI thing. Starting now. So I will introduce about the advancement in high pressure techniques and advanced methods in calibration of pressure scale, why megawatt pressure is required, and techniques and tools for achieving megawatt. And as and when the talk progresses, or the lecture progresses, in the subsequent lectures, I will give talk about the combined high pressure, high temperature, high pressure, low temperature, and using these, the recent discoveries about the super materials and the materials related to the geophysics importance,
I'm Sam Glitch. Hello. <clears throat> Some uh, some glitch or something? I can, uh, yeah, uh, can I see the slides? So yeah, now it is okay. So, All right. so let me introduce first of all uh, the father of high pressure physics, and he is none other than Percy Williams Brisman, P. W. Brisman, and he got Nobel Prize in physics in 1946. For his work, he carried out towards high pressure physics. And he was the first person who did all kind of high pressure work in, uh, in his life. And I would like to give a quote from this person that the first business of a man of science is to proclaim the truth as he finds it and let the world adjust itself as best it can to the new knowledge. So this is the first and foremost requirement for a person working in science to be honest to our science. And so I, I, I hope that you people have uh, understood what is pressure just for completeness. So pressure is force per unit area. And here I, I, I am showing you that, uh, that in case of normal uh, force, you divide by area just, but in general, pressure is uh, Stress of one third of stress of stress matrix. And in general, the stress matrix is a second order tensor. So you will have different components of stress, like sigma e, sigma xx, sigma xy, sigma xz. So pressure is one third of stress of this stress matrix. And stress of stress matrix is sum of diagonal elements. And here, like sigma xy, if you see, so in the sigma xy, the first indice. X indicates the orientation of the surface. So like here, and the second in, in this is like Y, it indicates the direction of the force. So like in sigma X, Y, the force is in the Y direction, and it is perpendicular to the, it, it is in the perpendicular plane of the X. So it is in the YZ plane. So now, why high pressure is required? Why high pressure? So high pressure is a kind of, very clean thermodynamic variable, not only that, it can prominently tune the interatomic potentials. And here is one, uh, one this, uh, like this. Yeah. So here is, uh, you can see the two atoms A and B, if they are far away, So two atoms A and B, if they are far away, the interatomic potential between them is uh, very less. And suppose we are bringing them together from the infinite distance, then what will happen? They will have a, they will start having an attractive energy Ea, and if you bring them too closer, they will have a repulsive part. So in general, this is the interatomic potential curve for uh, two uh, atoms. So what happens with pressure that we can study very prominently by applying pressure. Of course, you can change with temperature, but temperature has its own effect. Like if you have apply high temperature or low temperature, there are many thermal excitations, but with pressure, you don't have those kind of things. And so you can tune the interatomic distances of the material under investigation very prominently. And pressure is a pervasive variable. So you don't realize, but we have pressure around us everywhere. Press, so pressure is omnipresent in whole universe. Like in, it is present in our day-to-day -day life. Like in pressure cooker, in every day, we use pressure cooker to make our, cook our food. And the typical pressure inside the pressure cooker is 30 PSI, or two atmospheric nearly. And the typical pressure inside the car, which is around 30 to 35 PSI. So what happens with pressure about the interatomic potential? So as you see the interatomic potential, you can consider as made up of a cohesive part and the repulsive part. So when you apply the pressure, the, your potential becomes steeper and steeper. So this part, 
becomes more steeper with application of pressure. As well as with application of pressure, the depth of the interatomic potential that also well depth also increases a lot. So here are the effect of uh, pressures. Like I have given a few examples. Like what pressure can do. So you all must be aware about the fine knee type wheels and knee type uh, sandals. And the typical fine sandals they have a pressure of 0 0.01 GPA. So if you apply further higher pressures like 0.2 to 0.4 GPA. You can see folding of uh, intermediates stabilized by ubiquitin. And then at further higher pressure like 0.7 GPA, butadiene, which is a chemical, it oligomerizes in the absence of a catalyst. At 1 GPA, we use KBR as a pellet, which is compressed to 110 per centimeter square for IR measurement. And similarly, in the different, different ranges, like if you go to 4 GPA, you can have significant deep end occupation for cesium. At 7 GPA, nitrous oxide NO2 can transform into NO plus and NO3. At 10 GPA, our ice melts at 400 degrees Celsius. At 16 GPA around, iodine metallizes. At 39 GPA, lithium atoms chain form pairs. And at 60 GPA, we can have symmetric hydrogen bond in ice 10. We all know that ice has different kind of crystal structures in different pressure and temperature phase diagrams. And oxygen, which is gas at ambient pressure and temperature, it metallizes at 95 GP. So you see how much changes of 100 GP a pressure can do. And at 150 GP, this polar H2, that non-polar H2 becomes polar and it starts giving higher signal. And of course, uh, hydrogen is supposed to be metallized at much, much higher pressures. And, and we know that at our, our, our core, the pressure is 360 GPA. So pressure can do a lot for our uh, understanding and for our uh, existence. So here are another slide which states that with pressure, you can have completely new states of matter and chemistry with higher pressures. Like here I have shown, pressure can, not only temperature causes condensation, we know that when we layer lower the temperature, you have condensation. With pressure also, you can have condensation of the phases, like you can condense the gas to make it liquid. And if, if you apply further pressure, there can be bonding. So you can make gaseous solids, actually. So you can have bonding in the material. And if you apply further pressures on the bonded materials, you can make them better packed materials. And not only that, even with pressure, you can ionize materials. So pressure can exhibit different kinds of phenomena starting from condensation, to bonding, to packing, to ionization, to structural phase transition, to superconductivity, and all kinds of phenomena. So here I have shown this uh, example like, uh, a, a, a example of diamond, which is obtained under high pressure and high temperature from the graphite. Like we all know that graphite is also made up of carbon and diamond is also made up of carbon. But graphite is so soft that we all know that in our pencil, the lead, which is made up of graphite, we can write because graphite is a layered material and it has wonder wall interaction between the layers, which is very, very weak while diamond is the hardest material existing on the earth. And ice 10, which is obtained at high pressure, is a symmetric, symmetric hydrogen bonded phase. And of course, there are prediction of metallic hydrogen, and people are uh, in search of metallic hydrogen. And I can say that the search for metallic hydrogen is uh, is same in high pressure field as the quest for the gold or alchemy in chemistry. Like people started whole chemistry to make gold. Similarly here, whole high pressure is moving forward, whole high pressure field is moving forward to metallize the hydrogen. Like we all know that hydrogen 
belongs to the first column of the periodic table. So all elements below the hydrogen are metals like lithium, sodium, but hydrogen is not metal at ambient conditions. So it should metallize. And with not only that, with high pressure, you can make electrides. So visually, what are electrides? Electrides are basically where the valence electrons, they, uh, they come into a cavity and they become localized. So they act as an anion. And these are very different, beautiful forms of uh, localized electrons acting as an anion. So pressure is like pervasive all, all everywhere, like starting from the bottle of Coca-Cola to gaseous bottles in Earth and in planetary interiors and everywhere. And uh, here I would like to uh, delve on the energy scales particularly uh, with compression of uh, energy based on the low G molecules such as in nitrogen, here you see the energy with the one kilo bar, the P delta V term can be supplied of the order of one milli electron volt. While if you increase to further higher pressure like one GPA, the energy supplied is of the order of 0.1 electron volt. At one mega bar, the energy becomes comparable to electron volt. And if you go to the terapascal pressures, the energy becomes comparable to tens of electron volts. If you go further higher pressures, like in gigawatt pressures range, the energy becomes of the order of kilo electron volt. So this kind of energy <coughs> leads to significant changes in bonding structure and properties of the materials. And that leads to materials with very unusual properties, which, are, which does not exist at ambient room temperature conditions. So these are the different tools by which one can produce pressures, either by large volume presses or, <coughs> or by uh, diamond anvil cells or gas guns or laser G machines, and uh, of course in the nuclear explosions. So another very hot or important topic for the high pressure is the quest for the structure and composition of our Earth. We all know that Earth has different layers. We all know that Earth is made up of mainly three layers, mantle, core, mantle, like crust, mantle, and the core. The very first layer is crust, then mantle, and then the core. So how the pressure inside the Earth varies and how the temperature varies and uh, what kind of materials are there inside. We all know that Whatever minerals we found, it is found in the Earth's, uh, Earth's core, uh, like Earth's mantle and Earth's core. So we, we, in our laboratory, we can mimic conditions similar to inside Earth, similar to the interior of the Earth, and we can directly try to understand <clears throat> what is happening inside Earth. So we can understand the dynamics as well as structure and composition of the Earth. Like we know that there are different layers like D-dust, D-double dust layer and this transition zone. So these are very important, they play a very important role in understanding the seismic activity and other different things of the Earth. So as and when I will go in the lecture, in the different lectures, I will tell you more about the high pressure and high temperature conditions inside Earth. Like we know that as you go from top crust to the Earth's interior, the pressure increases up to almost 360 GPA, and similarly, temperature, temperature also increases. So it is very, very important to understand with simultaneous high pressure and high temperature studies, the behavior of materials <coughs> to know the exact composition and structure of them. So now I move to advanced high pressure experimental methods so I understand that in previous lecture, you might have learned about the basic techniques for generation of high pressure. I understand that uh, Dr. Himansu Poswal had taken many lectures on uh, generation of high pressure, pressure measurement, and calibration of pressure scales. So I will skip these things, and I will go basically to the advancement in these techniques. So we know that static high pressure can be generated either by using large volume presses 
but that is that, that is also called multi annual apparatus and diamond annual cells so let us see what is this multi annual apparatus is so you might have learned something about the multi annual apparatus is uh, that the monsu lecture so here i have just for the completeness i have stored that multi annual apparatus can be of two types yeah like one is dia type that uses six annuals to compress a cube like here you see two uh, from left and right and two from top and bottom and two from other directions so six annuals that compress a cube sample geometry in a cube and another geometry is six oblique eight geometry that uses eight annuals like 1 2 3 and 4 and four on top of it where sample is in the form of octahedra so in both cases a large hydraulic press is required to drive the annuals together and that's how you generate higher pressure so like what are the parts of a multi annual press so this is a cartoon or figure for a typical multi annual press where it has three main components so very first part is hydraulic press that provides the force then high pressure module that contains the annual so this module goes here so <clears throat> this high pressure module is a very involved and time consuming task to prepare with help of eight truncated tubes you make the sample chamber and sample geometry and inside inside this cube you use this sample assembly for loading sample material and using this multi annual apparatuses you can really generate high pressure as well as high temperature conditions which can mimic not only up to the crust but even up to the mantle pressure and temperature so i will show you in the next what are the advancements in this multi annual apparatuses like what are the recent advances of in the high pressure generation in multi annual apparatuses using sintered diamond annual cell so earlier people used to use tungsten carbide tubes <coughs> truncated tungsten see here truncation so truncated tr carbon tr truncated tungsten carbide tubes to generate the high pressure and the advancement in this is now people are using sintered diamond as a second stage annual so in conjunction with the tungsten carbide they are also using the sintered diamond so this tungsten carbide are larger size like almost 32 mm size while this sintered diamond they are just 14 mm size so why with sintered diamonds you can use you can go up to very high pressure and what are sintered diamonds what is the, they are not single crystal diamonds actually they are sintered polycrystalline diamonds so using sintered diamond as the second stage annual in the hydraulic presses or in the multi annual presses you can go pressures beyond 90 gpa so you can reach pressures as good as the pressures at the deep mantle or the lower mantle pressures so what is there this sinter diamonds basically their density is higher the density of sinter diamonds is higher than even the density of diamond and that is basically because these are sinter diamonds are made up of fine diamond powder with cobalt as binder so due to the presence of cobalt their density is higher and uh, so here are the comparison of some parameters of sintered diamond and tungsten carbide like the compressive strength of sintered diamond if you see it is higher than 12 gpa while in case of tungsten carbide it is less than or equal to 6 gpa and that's how you are able to increase the pressure range in multi annual apparatuses by using the sintered diamonds not only that the noob hardness the noob hardness is a parameter of sinter diamond which is almost of the order of 5000 kg per millimeter square while in case of tungsten carbide it is 2400 kg per millimeter square the bulk modulus of sinter diamond is almost 410 gp which is as, as good as bulk modulus of diamond which is 420 gp so sinter diamonds are really sinter polycrystalline diamonds 
are really, really very good materials used in these multi annular apparatuses to increase the pressure range from 30s, 40s up to hundreds of GP. So the effect of cobalt bind binder on the elastic properties of sinter diamond is that low, uh, what, what we want that we want lower content, lower is the content of cobalt, higher is the elastic stiffness of sinter diamond. So we want cobalt as a binder material in the single crystal, uh, like uh, in the sintered polycrystalline diamond, but, but less amount of cobalt so that its elastic its stiffness can be increased more. So to increase the further quality of sintered diamond, we want sintered polycrystalline diamond made up of less cobalt binders. So that increases the efficiency of pressure generation in multi annual apparatuses. And of course, there are other effects of other parameters like effect of surface roughness. So the smaller the surface roughness of sintered diamond, higher will be the efficiency of pressure generation in the multi annual apparatus. So it is very important like how the sintered polycrystalline diamonds are made. So that governs the efficiency of high pressure generation in multi annual apparatuses using the double stays anyways in, in uh, multi annual apparatuses. And here is a graph uh, showing the pressure achieved and uh, at room temperature, this is the load applied using the <coughs> hydraulic ram. So this is the measurement done in the diatite MA speed 1500 multi annual apparatuses. And you can see here that even in very uh, like 2008 or 10, they have achieved pressure of almost 90 GPA using the center, center diamond, uh, center uh, polycrystalline diamond of 14 mm uh, center diamond cube, the multi annual assembly. So this was carried out in uh, like E2 at all in PSL in 2010. And uh, here is what I was talking about the noob hardness. So noob hardness of different materials, comparison of noob hardness. So noob hardness has a definite relationship with the maximum pressure achievable. Like here is a graph showing the noob hardness of different material like tungsten carbide, sinter diamond, and sinter diamond and single crystal diamond. So if you see tungsten carbide as a material which has noob hardness of the order of 2400 and the pressure achievable is in the range of 31 GPA. While with the sinter diamond, sinter polycrystalline diamond, you have noob hardness of the order of 5000 kil kilogram per millimeter square and the pressure achievable, highest pressure achievable can be of the 150 GPA. So this is the highest that can be achieved. With single crystal diamonds, of course, the noob hardness for single crystal diamond is the highest, that is 9,000 kg per millimeter square, and the highest pressure which can be achieved is kind of order of the 550 GP. So what is noob hardness? So noob hardness, it is a measure of the hardness of a material calculated by measuring the indentation. How do you produce indentation? You produce indentation using the diamond tip that is pressed onto the surface of the sample. So whatever sample you want to measure the loop hardness, you use it uh, with the diamond tip and you press it with the diamond tip and by pressing, you try to scratch and that's how you measure the uh, loop hardness of the material. This test was devised long back by F. Noop in 1999. So the final loop hardness is derived from the formula HK equal to 14.229 F by D squared. Where what is F? F is the applied load and D squared is the area of the indentation measured in square millimeters. So although by using this uh, second stage anvils of sintered polycrystalline diamond, we can reach up to beyond 90 GPA and hundreds of GPA, but there are many challenges using these uh, sintered polycrystalline diamonds. Like during compression of this double stage uh, sintered polycrystalline diamonds in conjunction with the tungsten carbide, sometimes blowout can happen and the experiment is immediately terminated. 
So why blowout happens in sintered diamonds? And it has been observed till now that frequency of this blowout using the double stage sintered diamond annual is really more than that of using conventional just tungsten carbide normal stage uh, annuals. So, of course, the pressure comes at a cost, like you are reaching, you are achieving higher pressures, but that comes at a cost. So, what could be the reason? The reason may be a larger pressure gradient to the pressure medium, because I think that the Himansu might have explained to you in the sample assembly, we use pressure medium and gasket uh, to make the sample chamber in the octahedron assembly. And so what is the remedy for this? So one remedy for is this, that before putting your whole sample assembly along with the tungsten carbide and sintered diamond anvil into the multi anvil apparatus, before that one can preheat. So if you preheat on compression before actually going into the multi anvil apparatus, it can, you may be able to avoid this blowout kind of experiment this blow kind of failures. And another thing is that quality of the sintered polycrystalline diamonds are also very important. They play a very important role. Like the way sintered polycrystalline diamonds have been manufactured or made, it is very, very important. What is the way, what is the method which has been applied to make these polycrystalline, sintered polycrystalline diamonds? So even like I can show you here the uh, sintered, uh, fill sintered uh, polycrystalline diamonds, which have subsidence here. Like you see here on their uh, edges, they have subsidence. Here they have subsidence. So they failed here actually. Actually there should be just truncation here, but you see these things. So they have a uh, like subsidence here. So this failure analysis, showed that the subsidence in the sintered polycrystalline diamonds caused the pressure drop and blow out. Therefore, it is important to the quality of sintered diamond anvil to generate higher pressures using these multi anvil apparatuses. Also, a large high quality sintered diamond cube is necessary for a larger sample volume. So our aim is to increase the size of the sintered diamond polycrystalline diamonds as well as to go to to go for the better quality center diamond cubes and but in case of using the large volume presses or multi annual apparatuses the major drawback is this bulkiness so these apparatuses are very bulky in nature and often they lack in situ investigation so you cannot do in situ characterization like at beam lines, in situ XRD investigation or in situ gamma optical investigation with these multi angle apparatuses. So you always have to do X situ, like you synthesize or make the material under high pressure, high temperature, or you give the material the very high pressure extreme conditions and temperature, and then you retrieve the material. Again, the retrieval of material is also a very tricky and very involved task. So you have to you have to disassemble the whole assembly, sample assembly and cubes. And more often than not, these cubes which are used, they often go bad in one or two runs. And then you take the octahedron or cubacahedron out of that and you again open this octahedron or break the, those octahedrons are broken and then you take the sample out of that and you characterize uh, x c2 x c2 means either you do some sem analysis like uh, r r to xrd or to optical investigation you can characterize the materials and then you understand the behavior of material x c2 but many of them these in situ investigations are very important and they be, they are very very fast so for in situ investigations, diamond animal cell are the <coughs> tools or the diamond animal cells are the devices which we quite often use. 
and diamond aluminum cells are not bulky so they unlike the large volume presses which are very bulky and they, re they require very voluminous efforts for performing high pressure experiments the diamond aluminum cell example of opposed aluminum cells like himanshu might have told you and they are very handy and easy to operate devices these devices even you can hold in your palm like here this is a symmetric type of diamond aluminum cell and this one is a modified mau bell type of diamond aluminum cell so in these two cells the force application of force mechanism is different like here in case of symmetric diamond aluminum cell you use the spring in conjunction with the bellwell washers to apply the load or to bring the diamond anvil together in case of modified mau bell type of diamond anvil cell you use this lever arm assembly to apply the force so using this lever arm and this uh, nut you apply force together and make this diamonds on the piston and cylinder uh, force each other and here is the blow out view of the diamond anvil inside the symmetric type of cell so you can see here a typical diamond anvil opposing anvil and a gasket seat in between so what we do that inside gasket seat we inside the metal gasket seat we indent with we make a mark with the diamond and make our sample chamber which uh, i understand that himanshu might have told you so the the behind this diamond and anvil cell the important things the things which are making it happen are the diamonds you know diamonds are forever so how do you get the best quality diamonds so in order to get the best quality diamonds we basically compare their second order raman spectra so here this is a second order raman spectra from a natural diamond versus a diamond with the c12 isotope so you can see that diamond with the c12 isotope had high, has higher signal to noise ratio in the second order signal peak and background than in case of natural diamond versus background so if you see the natural diamond is second order peak versus intensity of second order peak versus the background is just of the order of 1.2 while in case of isotopically substituted c12 diamond it is almost 1.5 and it is very very important that diamonds are available and this diamond and will cell was discovered in 1958 so why we are able to you go to very high pressures using diamonds because diamonds are the hardest material and they have very very high strength their thermal conductivity is very high so some of the property which we use here some of the property can be nuances also but as the talk progresses i will tell you how to counter those things and the best part of the diamond is it has very trans very uh, it has optical transparency from ultraviolet to infrared so it is transparent in the whole electromagnetic spectra and not only that it is transparent in the hard x-ray region also it has very low coefficient of friction low thermal expansion and not only that diamond is also resistant to chemical corrosion so diamond as a material is very very useful not only for the female or girl for ornaments but for us as a physicist as well as material scientist as well as semiconductor persons <laughs> diamond is a very very important material for mankind <laughs> so here you see the infrared transmission spectra of diamond so this is comparison of infrared absorption spectra of different kind of diamonds like this is a natural 1a type type of diamond this is synthetic 1b type of diamond this is natural type 2a and synthetic 2a so you can see that type 1a diamond which have more nitrogen impurity they have absorption band while synthetic type 2a diamonds they are very transparent for the far ir spectrum or uv and 
So you generally use type two A diamonds, which are less in nitrogen impurity and very pure. So it is very very important from experiment high pressure experiment point of view that what kind of experiment you are planning, whether you are planning a structural ex investigation experiment, you are planning an optical experiment, you are planning a, a experiment from the experiment from measuring some properties like uh, resistance or conductivity or optical conductivity or something else. So depending on that, you choose the diamond, you choose the cells and you perform your experiment. So next is, uh, let me tell you something about the diamond anvils. So here, this is the blowout diagram of the diamond anvil. So you see here, this is called table of the anvil, which sits on the backing plate. And this is called the girdle of the anvil. And this one, this is called the culet of the anvil. So what we do that generally, this is a dual cut of anvil. So what we do generally, like we take the jewel cut diamonds, which has very fine bones, and we chop off their top to make the culet of the order of, in the normal experiments, we generally use culets with 0.3 to 0.4 mm sizes, and this 0.3 to 0.4 mm is 300 to 400 microns. So this, these anvils, one anvil, like one diamond anvil, is of the order of 0.3 carat. And these are used in normal high pressure experiment. So in between these anvils, we have this thin metallic sheet. And generally, we use inconal steel or tungsten and rhenium, depending on the experiments and depending on the pressure ranges. And depending on the type of experiments, we can use different kind of metallic gaskets. Like if you want to do transport measurements, you need to have non-metallic gaskets. <clears throat> so using this diamond anvil, the in situ studies are possible because of its optical transparency, as well as because of it is transparent in the X-ray range. And not only that, you can use these diamonds to laser heat, to increase the temperature of the material inside the sample chamber at simultaneously at high pressure condition. So, but the point, another point which I want to make you caution that diamond is not a stable form. Diamond is metal stable at RTP. So, when heated above 600 degrees Celsius in air and in oxygen, it turns black and reverts to fight on heating above 1500 degrees Celsius. So, one has to be very, very careful while doing high temperature experiments at high pressures using diamond anvils. So as soon as you involve another parameter, another physical parameter, another thermodynamic parameter with pressure like temperature, high temperature or low temperature or magnetic field or electric field, your level of difficulty in experiments goes a lot, goes up a lot. And they become very, very specialized experiments. So, to further eliminate that, uh, to further eliminate that, this part, like uh, what is there, I have blown out this, and you see that the particular gasket, which was in the form of a uh, rectangle inside view, it when you indent it, it takes the form of your anvil actually, and this these forms they try to support the gasket supports the diamond. So gasket is a very important discovery in the field of high pressure science, high pressure experimental science. So inside, like this is a typical 400 micron anvil. So inside that 400 micron, we generally use one third of its indented portion to make a cylindrical sample chamber of the order of 100 to 120 micron diameter and thickness like 80 to 100 micron. So depending on our experiment, again, we <coughs> prioritize our sample chamber. So inside sample chamber, you can have a pressure marker like ruby ball, 
or just uh, one UV platelet plate, and then you use a force pressure transfer medium for having hydrostatic pressure inside uh, at the sample, and you put your sample inside the sample chamber, and then you apply pressure using the uh, force driving mechanism. So, what kind of pressure distribution is there inside this diamond anvil? So, this is a typical cartoon we saw. Like here, you see, like pressure distribution over the area of elastic contacts. Like this, this one first one is for a conical indenter, for which lambda equal to one by two, and the second one is for a sphere which touches smoothly, and the third one is for cylinder for lambda equal to p. So see the pressure range. This is the radius of contact area for the 300 micron, like from this uh, 0 to 150 and minus 0 to 150. So you see that if your indenter is of the cone size, the pressure is higher at the touch point at the center. And it <coughs> falls from center to the periphery in this way. But if you have an indenter of the spherical shape, like lambda equal to one, so your pressure is like this. But if you have a cylindrical shape, your pressure distribution inside your sample chamber is like this. And these are the least, least lines of equal shear stress ratio for a nearly conical indenter. So you see that on all these lines in the sample chamber, the shear stress will be equal on these lines. So these are like the equipotential surfaces here, these are equi-shear stress line. So inside the sample chamber, you have a circle where the stress will be almost equal. But what happens, like you see here, you see here, like the density of the stress lines are more at the edges. So this distribution is for normal kind of anvils. Normal kind of like uh, flat tulate anvils. So now if we want to go to the higher and higher pressure, uh, if we want, to the, we want to achieve more and more pressure, like I understand that you all might be knowing about the mega bar pressures. So one bar is one atmosphere, and one megabar is 10 to the power six atmospheres pressures. So one megabar is hundreds of GPA. Again, another scale, gigapascals, which we quite often use in the high pressure physics, and one pascal is one Newton per meter square. So we know that pressure is nothing but force. So in order to increase the pressure, the obvious answer is just increase the force. But the F maximum, uh, maximum pressure which can be applied at diamonds, it depends on like your cell design or your diamond, your mechanical design of your uh, cell assembly and the force applying mechanism, like the, by the mechanism by which you are applying the force on the anvil. Of course, it can be either screws or screws with very, very washers or lever arms or membranes. So these things govern how much F max you can apply. So it turns out that given the cell design and given the force applying mechanism with certain constraints, you may not be able to apply very high forces. So then other option is you reduce the area. So by reducing the area with same application of force, you can increase the pressure tremendously. So, according to Dunstan and Spain, the empirical relation between culet area of the diamond and maximum pressure which can be achieved using the normal anvil. When I say normal anvil, means it has flat culet. So, the P maximum in gigapascal is 12.5 divided by D in millimeter square, where what is D? D is culet diameter in millimeter. So, 
this formula empirical formula is applicable to normal qlet sets in general for all practical reasons the maximum pressure used in experiments is not the p max of the given d but it is p experimental max is only 80% of p max so p experimental max in gigapascal is 0.8 p max so like for example a typical qlet diameter with 0.4 mm or 400 micron the p max is 78 gpa but for all the safe regions you should achieve p experimental max only up to 63 or 62 gpa not more than that if you try to go beyond that there is a more chances of failure of your anvil failure of your gasket failure of your, your backing plates and sometimes even your cell can fall apart or sometimes even your cell can also uh, get damaged so how to increase this applied pressure in the range of hundreds of gb like if you want to go to the megabar regions in terms of megabar pressures we necessarily need to reduce the size of the qlet but with decreasing qlet size we ha we have to face a few issues like i told you before like what happens uh, like here your uh, shear density increases at the qlet edge so if you uh, if you have smaller and smaller qlets the shear density increases a lot at the qlet edge and there is a pinching of gasket with higher pressure with the qlets so what happens then that with pinching <coughs> your gasket fails there is a failure of gasket and your experiments can uh, you have to bar the experiment in between another thing which i wanted to mention is like you see here i have draw two circles like if i consider the top of the qlet uh, consider the top of the anvil like qlet as a circle so like one circle this is a bigger circle and this is a, a smaller circle so area of the bigger circle divided by area of a smaller circle is uh, area of a smaller circle divided by area of bigger circle is pi r2 square by pi r1 square and if i take r2 is equal to r1 by 2 if i take this if i want to reduce the radius of the circle by half of the bigger circle then you see that area reduces by 1/4 so you see here that the space or the area working area reduces a lot with reduction in the diameter so that is a very very important point to realize when you are going for the hundreds of gpa or the megabar pressures so everything becomes very very miniaturized and very very difficult starting from alignment of the diamonds making sample chambers drilling the holes loading the samples everything becomes very very challenging so what is the answer how do you want to increase the pressure so instead of normal qlets you want to go for the bevel diamond anvil so here <coughs> like this is a example of flat diamond anvil so in the flat diamond anvil you have flat top but in case of bevel diamond anvil you have two you have a angle like the this from here to here will be the same range but you make another angle on top of this qlet so you have a qlet on top of another qlet you can say so you you have to make your diamond in such a way or you have to polish your diamond for getting this bevel diamond so these are called single bevel in, in addition to one bevel you can have two bevels so what is what what is the advantage of having bevel so with the beveling the stress distribution are is the with the beveling the this uh, shear stress decreases at the edges 
And another thing is that because of the beveling, the pinching of the gasket is not there. So you have now enough space for gaskets to be compressed. Because I showed you that when you indent a gasket, it flows out. So you have now enough space to pinch, uh, to compress the gasket, uh, to compress the material more. So with different kind of optimizations, it has been observed that the bevel angle of 7 to 8.5 degree is most suitable for achieving high pressure. So this is a live example of a bevel diamond anvil. Like from here to here is the flat bullet with the larger size. And then we have bevel on top of this. So this is a single bevel diamond anvil. Even the alignment of single bevel diamond anvil is very, very difficult. Stop. I can start. Okay, so let me show one more slide, maybe. Uh, so here is the here is the characteristics of beveled anvil. Like here is the pressure distribution inside a beveled anvil. You can see. So at the center is the highest pressure, and it reduces as you go away from the center. So this is the uh, top culet, beveled culet of uh, I think. 100 micron, and the pressure achieved like 170 GPA, it is like this, in 240 GPA. So you see the pressure distribution as you grow from 170 GPA to almost 400 GPA, the pressure distribution changes inside. Maybe the other things I will tell you in the next lecture because it is going to take some more time, and we are, I think, uh, four o'clock now. So I should stop here. I will continue from this slide onward in the next uh, lecture. Thank you. Are there some questions? You might like to take some questions. No questions? Uh, let him see if there are some questions online, like there are some questions online? No. Uh, I think there are uh, no questions, so maybe we can stop here. The next lecture I will start from the same uh, slide. And uh, I will talk about the high pressure and high temperature uh, experimentation and, and intricacy involved in those things. Okay, all right then. Okay.